Hi everyone, in previous class we are discussed all about the periodic trends in a chemical properties of the elements. In this class I am going to talk with you the periodic trends and the chemical reactivity. How the elements are reacts with the another elements and how they form a compounds and what are the nature of that element all these things we will study in this class so see here guys the chemical reactivity is high at the two extremes of the periodic table and lowest at the center means already you know that our periodic table is like this i wish to draw here here we are having a s block elements and at the center we are having a d block elements and at the right side of the periodic table we are having a p block elements and after that at outside we have a f block elements so two extremes means at the left side of the periodic table and at the right side of the periodic table the elements are highly reacted highly I means the elements are having a capacity or having a highly reactivity in a nature so why at the left side means group 1 group 2 you know s block elements group 13 to 17 you know p block elements here we observe high reactivity so why we observe a high reactivity in extreme of this left side and this right side guys already you know that when the reactions are takes place in between the two elements when the loss of electrons takes place or the gaining of electrons takes place or sharing of electrons takes place then only the reaction will takes place in between the two elements so already you know that s block elements are having a high tendency to lose the electron and p block elements at the right side they are having high tendency to gain the electrons so that's why easily reactions are takes place so they are highly reactive in nature so that next at the center <coughs> a little bit reactivity is lowest and next come to the point guys at the left side at the left side already I told you the s block elements are having a high tendency to lose the electron means they are metallic in nature the metals are easily lose their electrons so these are called as an electro positive elements also electro positive elements means nothing but ability to lose the electrons during the reaction and s block elements or metals forms the compounds then the compounds of metals are basic in nature then the compounds of metals are basic in nature if they are a single metals like uh, <coughs> lithium sodium potassium they are a metals when they form a compounds then they are basic in nature means NaOH is a base strong base KOH is a strong base magnesium hydroxide is a base Na2O is a base so like this the compounds of metals are basic in nature and next come to the right side guys the right side means the p block elements are non-metallic in nature why they are non-metallic in nature because they have a tendency to gain the electron so these are called as uh, non-metals so why the p block elements are having a tendency to gain the electron why the s block elements are having a tendency to lose the electron already you know that all elements are wish to attain their stable state and wish to attain octate state or they are wish to attain their noble configuration so for example any having atomic number 11 so it easily loss of one electron and it attains stable configuration chlorine having atomic number 17 
easily it gain a one electron and the chlorine attain octet state or their stable state so to attain the stable state configuration or to attain the octet structure or octet configuration they have a tendency to lose the electron and they have a tendency to gain the electron and when these elements are reacts and when these elements are form the compounds the compounds of these p block elements or these non metals are acidic in nature just observe the point guys the compounds of the metals are basic in nature and the compounds of non metals are acidic in nature example cl2o7 nitrogen dioxide and the carbon dioxide co2 no2 so these are most acidic in nature so see here navoh koh na2o magnesium hydroxide these are most basic in nature and the next uh, you know about the metalloids guys in a previous class i talk about the metalloids also metalloids are behave as a s block elements means behave as a metals and they are as well as behave as a non metals so the compounds of metalloids are amphoteric in nature amphoteric in nature means when these compounds are react with the acid they act like a base when they are react with the base they act like a acids means these compounds are act like a acids and act like a base depending upon their chemical reaction i already told you when the metalloids are react with the acid they are react with the acid they are act like a base when they are react with a base they are act like a acid and next at the center point guys if zinc oxide at the center points at the d block elements in the d block elements at the center points they are neutral in nature nor acidic nor basic so this is the nature of the elements once again i wish to repeat here the metals are the compounds of metals are basic in nature and the compounds of non metals are acidic in nature and the compounds of metalloids are amphoteric in nature and at the center the compounds are neutral in nature they are not act as a base and they are not act as a acid amphoteric means they act as both means acidic in nature and basic in nature depending on their chemical reaction and the next what is the trend of this basic nature and is acidic nature in this periodic table and what is the trend of the metallic character and the non metallic character so just observe here the metallic nature is directly proportional to the atomic radius how the metallic nature increases the basic nature also increases so the metallic nature is directly proportional to the atomic radius already you know about the trend of the atomic radius so just recall how the trend of the atomic radius is uh, radius in this periodic table at left to right the atomic radius is decreases means the metallic nature decreases so the basic nature also decreases as we move from left to right so like this already you know that and when we are move top to bottom when we are moving top to bottom the atomic radius increases as the atomic radius increases so they are having high tendency to lose the electron means high metallic in nature means high basic in nature for example i wish to write the first group elements like lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium which element have 
high metallic in nature cesium like this the metallic nature increases as we move top to bottom just remember this point guys so how the metallic nature increases as we move from left uh, sorry top to bottom like this the basic nature also increases as we move top to bottom and what about the acidic nature guys vice versa so see here non metallic nature is universally proportional to the atomic radius just remember these two points so by using these two points you got a trends of this acidic nature and the basic nature acidic nature acidic nature increases acidic nature increases as we move from left to right and acidic nature decreases as we move from top to bottom just rest remember the trends in the acidic nature basic nature and metallic in nature so this is the trend of their reactivity means like in a basic nature and the acidic nature and another point is that the metals undergo oxidation the metals undergo oxidation so the metals are act as a good reducing agent so what is the meaning of oxidation guys the oxidation has a many several definitions according to the electrons here i wish to say the loss of electron the loss of electron is called as an oxidation and the gain of electron is called as an reduction the metals undergo the oxidation means it is good reducing agent and the non metals undergo the reduction means the non metals having a tendency to gain the electron means easily electron is add here so the non metals are undergo reduction and they are good oxidizing agent means here the fluorine is a very very good oxidizing agent because it undergo reduction itself so remember these two points also in their reactivity so this is all about the chemical reactivity and their trends so here in this class this chapter completes guys i hope you got very well clear about all concept of this third chapter that is the classification of elements and the periodic properties